All right, Fun Nation, welcome back to another edition of Behind the Bumpers. I'm here at the Fim District Macomb event. My name is E. Lockman, and I am with Greater Pittsburgh Regional Winners Team 35-39, the Biting Bulldogs. They got a very comprehensive machine here at Macomb featuring a ground intake, a very efficient end effector, and lots of climbing and software that goes into this robot. So we've got Serenity, Hayden, and Caitlin to talk about all of this that goes into this wonderful green machine, and we're going to see how it works all on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and front runners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details. All right, first up, we've got Serenity to talk about the front mechanisms of the robot. Serenity, take it away. So we'll start with our elevator. It's a continuous elevator that can go from the trough all the way to the barge, the net, and L4. And what can we have connected onto our elevator is our carriage or our arm. And we can pick up algae and coral. Oh, okay. So we have trough. Then our L2, L3, L4. And then we have a ground pickup for our algae. And then all the way to the net. All right, next up we've got Hayden to talk about the funnel in the back of the robot as well as the climber and the drivetrain. Let's hear right. it. So for the drivetrain, we're running uh, Swerve X2 geared X3. We originally started out uh, geared X2, but for our four-piece Auton to even be close, we had to change it to X3 for the more acceleration. Um, we have a X60 for the drive and X44 for the weight, or for the turn, and we changed it to a 44 to save like a pound instead of the 60s. So then, I think my favorite part of the robot, the funnel here. So we can intake from the station, and then it can go any level. Just spit it out. And then we also have a ground intake. You might... So we can pick up from the ground. It's been really nice for defense. So if there's defense, we can just switch up the strategy really quick. Um, we've been running mostly station cycles, but we like for the farther back uh, uh, soaring, we do a couple off the, off the ground. It works really nice. And then the handoff is. Uh, from the funnel to here, we had to get these little, uh, I don't want to sit my hand there about, but those little cones in there, and those kind of help angle it onto the uh, end effector a bit better. Awesome, let's hear about this climber. So with the climber, we originally prototyped the Rush Towns climber with the two bars, and we found it worked pretty good, but it didn't line up very well. So we kind of transitioned, we kept the bar on the bottom, but we also have like this one way that will come out like that. So if you want to deploy the climber, yeah, yeah, go to, go to climb mode too. So then yeah, it'll pull all the way back. And we added these little kind of W's on the end after the first cup. It helped a lot with the lineup, so we can kind of smash into it. It's a lot better in the lineup. And we also have a little driver cam here, so we can climb any uh, any of the cages with a little wide lens too. So it's been pretty awesome. nice. Now talk to me a little bit more about this funnel design. It's very innovative and I haven't really seen anything like it before. Uh, so the funnel, I, it kind of started off as a joke. I was kind of against the funnel in the first, uh, at, at, at uh, the beginning, but I, we prototyped it and we found it's really nice to have the flexibility between the station intake and the ground intake because we saw ground intake was very, uh, very good. Um, it is a little limited, it only intakes it um, from on the ground like this, but when it's in station mode, flip it up. Oh yeah, okay. Awesome. In station, it can go straight, we go, we go straight for the Auton, it gets fast and consistent, 
but we can go sideways anywhere. So we built it a lot because uh, a lot of uh, human players us, we found last year, um, sometimes like it's just nice to have the wide intake. They can drop it in any angle and pretty much just tell them drop it in whatever and it'll work. All right, now I'm with Caitlin to talk about the sensors and software that goes on this awesome robot. So a lot of what we wanted on this robot was haptic feedback to uh, give our operator and driver um, just more of knowing what the robot is doing. So right here we have our coral sensor. Um, this guy is just gonna kind of help us know when we have a coral. It'll also stop the wheels once it, it's a distant sensor. So it'll stop the wheels um, when we are in handoff and once we have it. You can kind of see the lights, they go solid white when that happens. Um, this is the main one we use. It also tells us when to end the command for Auton, uh, when we can continue back on our path. Uh, we're using Path Planner this year. Um, we also have an encoder on the rotate for the score. Uh, we also we have one on the funnel as well, but not for the elevator and the climber. Those are just using the encoders and the motor. Um, so we have to make sure to zero them before each match. Like for this guy, we have to pull them up each match. Um, and for this one, we just have to do a systems check and make sure he's at the zero. Uh, skip it, we forgot to do one in the front. My bad, guys. You're good. Um, but we also have an algae sensor. So when these lights go blue and this is triggered, that tells us we have an algae. Um, in the code, it will also angle this depending on what our height of the elevator is so that we are not squishing any of the algae. Uh, we don't want to pop any game pieces on the field. Obviously, that would be bad. Um, one that we started using recently, a distance sensor, was this one for Auton. Uh, we had a consistent three-piece for our first two comps. We wanted to try and up that. Uh, so one way to speed it up was to use this sensor right here, which went, so the coral would come down. It would get in position here. And instead of ending the Auton command on the coral sensor right here, it would now end it on here and continue the path. Um, and we, we continue intaking as we are moving the robot to our next position. Awesome, now talk about the lights on this robot. This is a very innovative use of LEDs. Um, a lot of the lights uh, are just to indicate to our driver and operator what they're doing. Um, so if they're auto aligning, these will flash blue, tells them they're doing something autonomously. Uh, if they are um, intaking, a lot of times it'll flash. It'll flash the color they're intaking. White for um, coral, blue for uh, algae. Um, it'll also, if we have errors, like if we have a camera disconnected or we're e-stop, these will turn red. That'll tell us, hey, maybe don't use your um, auto align or you, you can't use the robot at all. Um, that's helpful for when we do get e-stopped uh, before turning the robot on. Talking a little more about auto line, we do have two cameras down here. Uh, we have a camera on each side. Uh, they're each on their own orange pie on the back. We're using photon vision for these. Um, these guys are specifically reading the April tags. Uh, we found that encasing the cameras will help them stay connected to the pies. Last year we were having some connection issues where they would not stay connected as long. We found that encasing them solved this problem. Uh, they have not disconnected on us all season. Uh, this is what helps us stay on, on path for uh, all of our autons. We also have vision weights, which is uh, the amount we're, ta we're telling the robot to trust in our vision measurements. Um, our last camera we have on here is actually a um, camera that the operator and driver use to line up the climber. So this is on a stream, which we can pull up on our dashboard that we made. So this just helps them to uh, align it so when this is down, they can, uh, and they ran into the cage, they can kind of see if these two hooks down here are on the ed edges of the cage. Um, 
this just overall helps us to uh, make our robot a little better. We also have just our soft, our general dashboard that we're using that we made telling us uh, elevator measurements, funnel, what they're supposed to be at, um, target. So if an encoder is broken, which that has happened on our practice spot, um, it'll tell us if, uh, if the, the uh, scorer is zeroed or if we're reaching that uh, target position. Awesome. All right, Fun Nation, this has been another edition of Behind the Bumpers with Team 3539, the Fighting Bulldogs, here at the Finn McComb District event. Thank you so much to the students who helped us talk about this wonderful robot, and we're going to catch you guys in the next edition of Behind the Bumpers. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free, scan the QR code, or go to altair.com slash contest for further details. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and front runners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu first.